you're involved with a lot of things, but if you could pick one of those things, what's next for you? Hi, I'm Mook, and welcome to my channel. A lot has gone on since the last time we spoke, and I mean, did I graduate? I showed it! But I won't get into all of that right here, at least not just quite yet. I mean, if you want to watch my full commencement speech that I gave when I received my PhD in biochemistry at the University of Washington during the Lavender graduation, then simply click here. I will put the whole video up here for you to watch. But you didn't click this video for that. No, you came here to join me on this journey as we find out the rhyme and reason behind biochemistry. If hip hop speaks truth to power and education is power, then what can we learn from our favorite hip hop artists? For specific protein in HIV, which for me <laughs> and Nicki Minaj's dad is actually a very intriguing concept for me. And it also helps that I have a full fledged Bob, which is a Nicki Minaj stand. And Bob is like one of my favorite talk show hosts. What's her name? <laughs> I might have lost you with that one, but that's okay. Don't worry. Let me back up and properly reintroduce myself. I'm Dr. Mook, and I'm your friendly scientist from the internet. Now, if you see some of my posts, you might think that I sound like a SoundCloud rapper being braggadocious and boastful about science and my love of it. And well, that's not the point. For a long time now, there's been this notion in society that certain jobs and certain careers are for certain people. For instance, why is it that when you think of scientists, this is the image that comes to mind? What is that? What is that notion that makes you think that certain things are for certain people? Not only is it just blatantly false, but it's also detrimental to our society. Science doesn't have a specific race, gender, or even personality type. Anyone can be a scientist. Now, obviously, not everyone wants to be a scientist, and that's okay. That's fine. The message we should be reinforcing to future generations is that you can grow up to be anything you want to be, not what you can be, because obviously you can be anything you want to be. The lack of diverse media representation of scientists is not only a reflection of the lack of diversity in science, but also the skewed and biased perception that society has about what scientists can look like, act like, and what they do. And unfortunately, this perception creates this negative feedback loop that leaves us stuck in this infinite quandrum. Now, let me say this. I am not a role model for what a scientist is. But I happen to be one, and a loud one at that. And I'm not saying that all of us scientists should come out <laughs> and be loud and visible. No, I was going to do that anyway. Oh, I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to do that anyway because that's how I am. That's just how I am. Oh, you never invested in a scientist in your own community because you didn't know one? Well, hello. Call me Dr. Mick. It's nice to meet you. Now, my point isn't to say that there's something inherently special about me or people who identify with me. No, my point is exactly the opposite, which is that there shouldn't be any prerequisites. It shouldn't matter what your background is, what your hobbies are, or your personal interests to be called a scientist. Given access to equal socioeconomic opportunities, kids should feel that a career choice in sports, music, or business is just as valid as one in science. Now, obviously everyone doesn't have that equal access to opportunities, but that's what makes this even more crucial now because we need young adults to express their brilliant, youthful minds in all areas, including science, in our communities. Listen, the world is on fire, okay? Particularly in developing countries like my own Zimbabwe. But in the world in general, it's plagued by new and complex problems that never existed before. And our current infrastructure, it's struggling to find new and insightful ideas to address 
these problems. The status quo isn't working for most of us. And well, that just so happens to be exactly where novel scientific research excels at. Scientists have been rescuing our world for millennia. I mean, since, since medicine, since agriculture, since the wheel, we have been here, been here. And this time, our time will be no different, but we need all hands on deck. And I know, I know, a lot of us think that STEM subjects are boring. Hell, I mean, hell, I do too. But it's not the content that's boring. It's the way we teach it. Slide after slide of mind-numbingly boring information, prerequisite information at that, coming at us like brick wall after brick wall. But what if there was a bit of way? What if? I mean, what if? What if we could make science just as relevant as pop culture? What if we could find out the laws that govern nature and the way we can master them all the while having fun? I mean, is there any real reason why we can't find out who finally is Becky with the good hair all the while finding out what are the biological molecules that make up good hair? Huh? Is there any real reason why those two things are incompatible? And well, that's exactly just what I want to find out. See, I've always existed between the intersection between science and pop culture. I cannot tell you the number of times I have used my love for one to fuel the other. The times I've used Nicki Minaj's verses as mnemonic devices to remember complex equations and grasp brand new concepts. And, and see, I could teach you that. I could teach you how to use your non-academic interests to fuel your learning, to inspire your independent study. I'm still technically on vacation until August. Um, which is my birthday month, you know, where my lion's at, raw. But in the meantime, I want to run this experiment. I've put together this short syllabus I like to call Hip Hop Biochemistry. This is just a few short videos that takes examples from pop culture, popular culture, to teach some of the fundamental and basic principles of my favorite topics in molecular biology. The point of an analogy is to take something known, something relevant to the student and use that to help the student grasp a new and foreign difficult concept, right? That's why we use sports metaphors and car metaphors in physics. But what often happens is that students like me who don't like sports or don't find cars all that fascinating end up having to go and look up how many innings are in a cricket match just so I can understand the trajectory of a vector and the velocity at which blah, 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 blah. You lost me already. Don't get me wrong. My mission isn't to erase these stereotypically cis straight white male references and examples from our textbooks. No. I simply want to add more examples to diversify the catalog from which teachers pull the analogies from and ask, will that cause a ripple effect and excite students who otherwise would have thought themselves too stupid for science or that science just wasn't cool enough? It hasn't been an easy road for me to get to where I am today. I mean, I know firsthand of some kids who just don't think they were meant to be scientists. I know whole communities who think of science as an elitist subject that is just simply beyond their reach. And at the same time, I know rich and successful scientists who are desperately looking for more people to give them fresh perspectives, new ideas, and work on those. And unfortunately, they can't seem to find enough people who think what they do is cool. You see, even though I've been a student, all my life, I've known that this gap exists and I've tried in many different ways to help on either side, be it through papers I've published or help get published, along with the voluntary outreach that I have done through my speeches, talks, and posters at colleges, high schools, and throughout my community. Or even with the many projects I started myself, some successful and some not. All this has been me trying to help in any minor way as I could whilst on my own journey to become a scientist. Well, I've arrived. 
and just so happened to be standing in the intersection of where the gap still exists today. And the solution is within reach. See, there's a professor called Ben Wiggins who teaches about active learning and ways of engaging with students effectively. And he describes the way we use abstract examples that aren't relevant to the communities we're teaching as educating a USB generation, but providing the vital information they need on a CD or floppy disk. We need to teach science in a way that's specific to the communities we're reaching out to. And it's been done before. Take, for instance, Dr. David Kimmelman, who published his paper on the cover of the developmental biology journal called Zebrafish. He went to India and constructed and instructed a developmental biology class to help teach Tibetan monks about the ebbs and flows of zebrafish life cycles by relating it to the teachings of Buddhism. I mean, see, there are receipts here. There are receipts. Yeah, there's receipts, Diane. If he can do that with one culture, then I can do that with mine, right? I mean, and I'm not even the only one. If you search right now, hashtag hip hop ad on Twitter, you will find there's a whole pedagogy conference going all over there. Ways people are using hip hop to teach architecture, to teach teaching, and so much more. And now I'm just using it to teach science. So welcome again to my social experiment, my class. Welcome to Hip Hop Biochemistry season one. Who are my students? You. It doesn't matter whether you are a kid with no scientific background whatsoever, or you're a Nobel Prize winner in chemistry or biochemistry. All of you are in my class, my students here. The scientific method that guides us as scientists requires that our experience have a well-defined hypothesis or question that can be tested by known methods and analysis tools. So ours will be the following. Can hip-hop increase the understanding and interest level of everyday scientists and how? I will hold office hours and give out surveys on Twitter at Tamuka Martin. I will be administering exams on Instagram at Tamuka Investments, and I will be giving out grades to incentivize independent study on Cash App at Tamuka Investments. This will allow me to keep track of my class curve. And after all is said and done, I will draw some preliminary conclusions and I will deliver some potential future directions right here on my YouTube channel. So subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to know more. Class starts tomorrow. Same time, same place. Comment below. Let me know if you will invest your time in this. All observations will be recorded. Peace. Thank you so much.